What's next up on our email questions today? Well, uh, Miguel Artiga says, Hello, John. Ever since watching the trailer, I've been looking forward to Welcome to Marwin, mm. thinking it'll be a huge award season player, but I haven't heard of any buzz from film pundits, critics, or many people in general. Do you think the film will bomb critically and financially? Thanks, and bring on the filthy. Well, Miguel's got a good point. I haven't either of you. No, as a matter of fact, the first press screening, I think, for it, I'm sure there may have been others, but but the press screening invite I got for it wasn't until tonight. Wow. And this movie opens in just a couple of days, so not only has a review embargo been in place, they haven't even shown it to a lot of the critics. Right. I, I'm sure some of them have seen it, but... A lot of critics haven't even seen this movie yet, and it opens in just a couple of days. Two questions were there. Will it uh, flop financially, and will it flop critically? Financially, I don't think there's much question there that this is not going to be a big hit. I mean, look, well, a movie like Welcome to Marwin is not designed to be a big hit. Right. Do they want it to make money? Yes. And that's why films like these usually are, have smaller budgets. But when you look at the effects and the, the, what they're going for and something like this, I can't help but wonder how much money they actually spent on this movie. And if that might have been a little bit unrealistic. Because I'll tell you what. If they spent $40 million on this film, reasonable. You can get that back. You don't even have to get that. When it's that small amount of money, you don't even have to get it back in your theatrical release like most films have to get right. it back in their theatrical release. At that small of a budget, you can do that. But I look at things like like this image here, and you see how much of that is in there. I cannot help but wonder. If this is a movie that came in at like 80 or $90 million, then I would have to go, what the hell were you thinking? This, right. this, this movie can find an audience, but it's not going to find a $300 million audience, which is once you get closer to that $100 million mark is the type of box office you need to make in order to, to make up for that. So, number one, I don't think it was ever a question this wasn't going to be a blockbuster. Will it be a flop? That really all depends on how much they spent on it. Critically speaking, though, look, I, I'm not going to change my tune here. I have always said that when you get down to the last minute and studios do not lift the review embargoes, that is a sign that the studio does not have a lot of confidence. And maybe they're wrong. Maybe they, they didn't think people would like it and they put it out and people do like it. But it, if a studio really believes people are going to like their films, they let the critics see them as early as they can. They let the review embargoes lift as early as they can. They do not hold it off to the last minute. Now, I'm not saying that means this is going to be a bad movie, not by any stretch of the imagination. I can't wait to watch this film. I would go to the press screening, except Anne and I are going to go see Spider-Verse again tonight, so I'm going to go do that. So Anne hasn't watched it yet, so I'm looking forward to that. But I, I love Steve Carell. I, I think this is one of the most unique-looking films I've seen come down the pipe in a long no time. Doubt. But I, I do have to admit, whereas when I first saw the first trailer for this and first talking about this months and months and months ago, I was thinking automatic Oscar consideration – now I'm even just wondering if it's a good movie or not. And again, we'll find out more once we actually see it. But it doesn't look good at this point. It's not a good picture they're painting. Robert, you're seeing all this play out. What's your reaction to it? Uh, well, you know, Robert Zemeckis is one of our great world-class oh, filmmakers. So and and uh, other than James Cameron, he's probably used visual effects in the most innovative ways of anybody in, in, in cinema history. I mean, if you look at some of the camera trickery he did in What Lies Beneath, mm. amazing stuff. I mean, of course, Robert Zemeckis made Back to the Future. He made Forrest Gump. He made My Beloved Contact. Did he I not do... He did the uh, the CG Beowulf as well, yeah. right? And, and I, I quite enjoyed that Polar Beowulf. Express, you know, and, and his first film just got announced by Criterion, I Want to Hold Your Hand, back from, I think, the late... 70s? Mm. I don't know. If it, and, it, you know, I, I never want to count Robert Zemeckis out. His last film, the Brad Pitt, the World War II film he did with, with Marion Cotillard. Right. Cotillard. Cotillard. And, and Brad Pitt was, I know it was spotty. trying to be a throwback. It was spotty. Yeah, it best. was beautifully made, but it just, it just seemed a little, it just didn't work for me. But I will go see anything Robert Zemeckis makes. And, of course, this is basically a movie where six scale action figures come to life. Yeah. And, and I, I want to live in Welcome to Morrowind, at least for a while. <laughs> yeah, and it's such a beautiful. The premise is so beautiful. Oh, so beautiful, and, and based on a true story. And based on, and, and an actor like Stephen Carell, I mean, but uh, yeah, it's got us wondering, man. It's got us wondering. I'll see it. I'm gonna go. Oh yeah, me too. I'm just not gonna go tonight. Yeah, because I'm seeing Spider Verse again. 